everyone, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be making a hand plane. I'm making kind of a hybrid Krenov style Japanese plane. I have this um, blade that I have in my smoothing plane that I wanted to use to make a uh, bevel down low angle jack plane for shooting and for a little bit of jointing. I plan on making it a jointing plane later to go with this blade. This is a really nice blade. It's nice and thick, um, stays sharp, real easy to sharpen. So first step was to measure the plane I had to see how thick it was and how big the mouth was and stuff. I ended up taking way more measurements than I needed, but um, I didn't know what information I would need. So I just measured every single thing I could. And so once I did that, I got my stock out. I have some cherry and some maple that I had left over from a project and I began seeing what I could do with it. Um, you could see the maple is just really bowed. So I'll go over how I overcame that because I couldn't just joint it straight because it was too, uh, wouldn't have been thick enough. So after I measured it out, I took it over to the miter saw and cut all my pieces to rough length, a little bit longer than, than they would be in the end. Then it was over to the table saw to uh, rip them to a rough width, a little bit wider than it would be in the end, but you always want to make things a little bit bigger if you can, so you have room for error and adjustment. And that's what it's looking like so far. Give you an idea. So then I went to the planer to get everything to the right thickness. Um, it's important that these are as very accurate because the thickness of these boards is going to determine how wide the plane is and I need to have it fit the blade and the chip breakers so, and look good. So I had to make sure all of these were very precise so you could see me using calipers to check everything. So a planer is not going to get rid of the bow in the maple board so um, what I'm going to end up doing is um, I'm going to have the part of the bow that's pulling out you can either have it on the two ends or the middle so I'm going to make it so it's the middle part that wants to pull out and the edges that want to push in so I could when I glue it the part that's trying to pull away is supported on two sides with glue as opposed to the edges pulling out where they'll only be supported on one side and then I'll, I'll book match because they're both from the same board they're blowing in the same way I'll book match them so they cancel each other out and so they're pulling on the the middle board and in opposite forces so it kind of straightens out the middle board and keeps it keeps it straight so here's how it is after all the planing and you can see that my chip breaker fits right in the middle three and then it's the same width as my old plane and then it's on to the glue up i'm just gluing the the three middle boards in i'm putting the outside boards in clamps just to act as coals kind of but um, I'm really just gluing the, the three middle pieces together right here. So you can see the uh, orientation of how the wood is bowing and how I'm gluing it. Um, the other board is opposite that. So um, they should be pulling against each other and should cancel each other out. And then I left that to in the clamps to, to dry. So this is a low angle plane. So um, I decided on 30 degrees and it's a bevel down. So the angle of the bed is going to be the angle of, of the cut. So I couldn't make this in my miter saw. So I had to do it by hand. So I'm using a marking knife and a straight edge and creating a knife wall to guide my saw blade uh, you just 
cut into the wood, severing the fibers with your marking knife, and then use your chisel to to create a little channel to guide your saw. Um, it's important that this cut is as good as I could make it, so I'm taking the extra time to make a really prominent knife wall. And so here it is, you can see it's really, really prominent, it goes around the whole thing. And so, onto the cut. So you can see me using the, the back tooth of the blade to kind of establish the kerf of the saw and get it, get it going. So the saw is kind of guided by that. Then I'll cut down one side and then go to the other side follow the knife wall, create the, the curve, cut down the, li the line on that side a little bit, and then cut the middle part, then go back and forth, go down one side, and, and down the other side, and cut out the middle part, and work my way down slowly, just following the knife wall and letting the, the knife wall kind of guide the saw blade and just keep it straight. And uh, you just want to go back and forth, down one side, down the other side, and then cut down the middle. And then, there you go. That came out pretty clean, a little bit on the edge. And the other angle is just 60 degrees, so I can cut down the wire saw way faster. So that's what we're looking like right now. And then I put some dowels in so that I could line everything back up um, repeatedly. And I'm going to cut a good inch off of these and so the dowels won't be there when everything's done. So then I need to cut out channels in the side to hold the blade in place. And so I'm using my marking knife to mark out where the bed is. And again, creating a very, uh, right there I'm marking my depth, creating a nice knife wall. I'm going to uh, use my saw to saw the side of the channel. I'm using the back tooth and the front tooth to kind of establish a nice saw curve along my knife wall and saw down to my depth line. Now I should have, or don't saw all the way down to your depth line, just saw, it. saw close to it. I should have sawed a little bit closer, but I was playing it a little too safe would have saved myself a lot of time. So once I got the bottom one down, I could put the blade on that one and do the top one. It, the blade tapers, so I couldn't just make parallel lines. So I had to uh, put the blade in place to see where it was going to line up and then make a knife wall and saw that one. Again, using the, the back tooth the front tooth to kind of create a straight saw curve along the knife wall and then saw down to the depth double checked it right there it's never a bad idea and I again stayed too far away from my lines and then I got my chisel and pared down to uh, to my depth line now all I have is a quarter inch chisel and at the very front it is smaller than a quarter inch so an eighth inch chisel would have been nice to have it would have saved me a lot of time I ended up having to come in with my file to file it down to my depth line and it took a lot longer than a chisel does so just pair down, create the channel. 
So now both channels are, are done. Um, left them a little small so I could fine tune everything. And again, I played a little too safe and left them a little too small. Ended up taking a lot longer to fine tune, but um, using the dowels to line everything back up and glue everything together. So once everything had dried, I flattened the sole. Uh, not perfect, but just a little bit better so I could use it along the table saw. I need to resaw this and get it down to height. So I also needed to uh, cut off the dowels and flatten those up. Then it was on to the table saw. Just use the old plane as my my guide, my measurement, and uh, sawed off the, the extra bit that was on the top, get it down to my final size. Then I could cut out the back where the dowels were and, and just straighten up that front edge. Then it was onto the jointer to flatten the sole. Now the key to this part is to just take super small cuts. I think I'm taking 128th of an inch and just mark it with a pencil and then keep going until the pencil's gone. I needed to have a nice right angle because I'm using a shooting board, so I'm checking that angle. And then checked it with a straight edge. Couldn't see any daylight. Couldn't get filler gauge in there. So I knew it was straight. Um, the side along the shooting board is going to be straight. And then checked to make sure that angle was square. And then came the long part. Um, getting the blade to fit perfectly in there. Um, I, again, I played it too safe, and so there's a lot more material to remove than there could have been. And you just take the blade and put it in the channels and find out where it's tight and chisel, file, and keep on doing that back and forth until your blade fits. And then here I'm, I'm widening the mouth giving enough room for the blade, the chip breaker, and, and the curls and the shavings to be able to fit through. So you don't want, really want to do that until you can get the blade down there so you know where the chip breaker and the blades are all going to line up and you can get them out to about a sixteenth of an inch bigger than that. Then it was time to put in the pin. And so... Um, I didn't have a, a drill press, so I kind of went back and forth, and I decided I could just spend my time marking it real well, and I'll just make sure I drill this straight. And I did do a, a great job marking it, just when it came time to uh, drill the hole. The first one went in perfect, and it was all lined up perfect, and then... When I drilled the second one, I just missed the mark, so <laughs> there's no point in uh, marking it out great if you're not going to hit it. But it ended up being alright. What happened is I ended up hammering it through and was able to hammer it into the wood on the other side so that it held itself in place. So then you could see how far off I was right there but it held itself in place and everything fit good and uh, there's the mouth you could see that 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 edge right that corner right there wasn't that great but um, it's pretty much how you would get it if you bought a Japanese plane and so I need to set it up and I wanted to make it a little bit sexier so I thought I would add some curves so adding a radius to the back and then a slightly uh, bigger one to the front give it some some shape and then took it over to the disc sander to clean it up now 
the disc sander works great, but this the sandpaper I got on it I got from Harbor Freight, and these this just sucks. Don't ever don't ever buy them. They leave huge burns, and then they don't last very long. So I'm gonna have to uh, clean that up. So uh, then I went to wanted to add some chamfers, so I'm adding some finding some chamfers onto it with uh, the file so I'm kind of not cleaning off the burns but kind of smoothing out that uh, that curve So then to get rid of the burns, I used some sandpaper. Um, just sanded the whole thing down. I stayed away from the sole and from the uh, the edge that's going against the, the shooting board too, because I had already straightened those out. So I'll clean those up with a, a card scraper, but just sanding it down, getting rid of the pencil marks and the burn marks. So then using the card scraper to make my, my chamfers nice and, and crisp and clean everything up for one final pass to get everything clean and clean up the uh, sole and the, the right angle edge. So then it would, this is pretty much how you would, you would get it, checking it with a straight edge. Now it's time to... Uh, to set it up so on a on a Japanese plane the uh, the sole is the is kind of concave the only flat parts are right around the mouth and uh, the toe and the heel and then the rest are small concave a couple of thousandths of an inch so use a card scraper to uh, to kind of take away those couple thou. And so now I'm putting the blade in and I'm all excited about to take my first uh, shaving, see if everything works. And my mouth wasn't big enough. Shavings kept getting caught, so I could get the corners, but I needed to spin some more time filing out the mouth getting it a little bit a little bit wider so after some time doing that i was able to widen it up a bit and uh was able to get some shaving from it for the first time so a little bit more fine tuning, uh, making sure that the blade was tracking square and uh, was working good. Um, it's taking a little bit thicker shavings than I want. I couldn't get it to really get those nice wispy ones. I think what I have to do is let it kind of settle for about a week or two and then re flatten the sole and uh dial that in a little bit better but was blade was straight and was cutting it nice and square and taking nice long or uh, full width shavings and um yes yeah, so i'm gonna let it rest for like a week and, and re-flatten the sole and, and reset up the sole to see if i could get the more wispy shavings but um it works now um I'm gonna use it for a little bit and, and keep on fine tuning it, but just added some boiled linseed oil to, to protect it and make it all pretty. Get it ready, ready for the ball. And uh, there it is, the Krenov style Japanese plane. I'm thinking of calling it the Krenese or the, the Japanov, but uh, Japanov sounds kind of vulgar, so it's probably Krenese. And so thanks for watching.
Uh, if you made it this far, you should might as well subscribe and hit like and thank you very much.